This is the 1872 Wheeler and Wilson Curved Needle Number no. 3 Half Case Low Bed Sewing Machine that I had said I was going to just put it away and just view it as an antique from now on. Miller on the uh, Wheeler and Wilson Yahoo email group list mentioned that um, what my problem seems to be with this machine is that the needle arm has too much play in it. So he has described um, this arm goes from the back to the front underneath here and all of those bolts need to be tight with no play in them in order for the needle bar to stay in its position. And if you've seen my other videos you know uh, that what happened was I was winding a bobbin and the needle arm head decided to start dropping on the glass presser foot insert and chipped away at the glass. So of course that was upsetting and I stopped doing anything with the machine. And I think that's why Miller has explained what the problem might be. So today what I'm going to do is take it apart and tighten all of that and see if it keeps the needle arm from dropping. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the cloth plate by removing, uh, there are five screws when the machine is complete. I'm missing the screw on the back here so I will remove four screws and remove the cloth plate so that I can get you the parts that are underneath. Now here's my problem. I right now have the presser foot down. Here's the presser lifter. I have it in the down position. The needle, the head of the needle bar is right here. And so right now it would not be hitting the presser foot. But when I put the presser bar up, it's too close. And this here seems to be some kind of adjustment for the height of the needle arm. So what I'm going to be doing, now let me show you the play that I have in, in this. See, that shouldn't be moving. It's also moving on the front clamp, which is more difficult to see, especially um, this is the, the other clamp right here, and there is a screw right down there that I need to tighten so that that is completely tight and there's no play at all. But in the meantime, I also have to make sure that the end bolts are tight and that this knob is set so that the needle is at the correct height, the needle bar. Look at how much play there is in this. Now I haven't seen a working machine like this in action. I don't know how high that needle bar really is supposed to be. Now this is about where that was set when the machine came to me and that has the needle bar going up about that much. But as you can see, see what happens? All of that is loose. So as I was winding the bobbin and sewing, it was doing um, far too much movement. So I'm not sure how I'm going to adjust the height of the needle arm. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start by tightening these up and make sure these are tight. Then I will set this at a certain place. I'll leave it right where it is now. Make sure that that is tight if it's adjustable at all. And I'll tighten up this clamp and the clamp in the front and we'll see what that gives me. Now this front clamp, which is right here, and the screw is at the bottom of it. I was just able to turn that screw almost a complete rotation to the right. And as soon as I did that, look at this, there's almost no movement. Now what does that do for my needle arm? Nothing yet. 
so there are, there's, see, there's too much play there. Everything needs to be tighter, but for right now, um, I've almost prevented the side-to-side -side play that I had in this uh, connection, just by tightening the one screw in the front. This um, adjustment knob that I've been talking about, I thought there might be a screw that tightens it from the back and that it was actually more like a bolt, but it isn't. Um, I just tightened it all the way to the right and it holds the needle arm in place without any movement. And if you'll notice, this is a bracket that's connected to that arm and that moves up and down. So what I think I have to do is adjust this bracket to the correct height and then tighten this as, uh, as tight as I can get it. This was coming loose when I was sewing. And I knew it was changing the needle height, but it, it wasn't really. It was um, loosening the bracket. So there's the needle arm at the highest position with the bracket set like that. If I move the bracket up and hold it there for a minute, and pull the arm up. The arm is lower. So this bracket and that bolt is what keeps the needle arm height consistent. So I have to tighten this, but I have to tighten it with the needle arm at the right height. And the bracket moved up accordingly. Here, here's the issue. I put the presser arm in the highest position and tighten things and yet in the down position it is hitting the presser foot. Here's the action and it's going to come down again and hit the presser foot. This is with everything tight that's what it's doing and there isn't really a way to lower the presser foot because this is a screw that screws onto the top of the presser foot shaft and keeps the presser foot at a certain height. So almost everything is tight but I've got the needle arm set still too low. It's still too low and it would hit the presser foot. So I just did it again. I moved the needle arm to the highest position um, by rotating the pulley that is the action for the machine and when I did that I lowered the presser foot so I didn't break the glass again and I'm not sure that I'm able to get this adjusted correctly so let's see what happens this time as it comes down and it's still going to hit that presser foot I'm trying to see how much clearance there is. But no, it clicks on the presser foot before it starts moving up again. So I have a further adjustment to make. I loosened the cam on the front and loosened the bolt holding the bracket that moves up and down. And I'm holding the presser arm in the highest position I can get it at. I'm now going to tighten that bolt on the bracket in the back and again um, work the machine over once and see if it hits the presser foot. I now have it set so that there's clearance. That is the needle at the down position. The needle head. I can fit the screwdriver in between the needle head and the presser foot. Now it's still has just a little bit of play in it. So I may have to keep doing this, but let me explain what I did. I loosened the screw on the front cam. And by the way, if you tighten that up too tight, it prevents the pulley uh, from turning. So you um, will be adjusting that. But what I did to do this was I loosened that completely. I had this loose. And instead of holding the needle bar up, I held the bracket all the way in the up position. And because that is what was difficult to tighten up and keep in place. So by doing that, 
even though the needle arm moved a little bit downward when I did that, I got some actual clearance between the head of the needle bar and the presser foot in the down position. And I do still have that clearance. So I'm going to do that again and make sure I have that this back bracket as high as I can get it. Um, and then I'm going to tighten it. And I think that's the way to get the proper clearance for the presser foot. So I have the needle arm in the up position. I'm going to loosen the front cam. I am then going to loosen the bracket bolt, which is right here. I'm going to make sure I have the bracket as high as it can go on the needle arm assembly. And then I will first retighten the bracket bolt and then retighten the front cam screw. And that should continue to give me, it was about a sixteenth of an inch clearance. And um, I think that if I can get it set like that and then keep everything tight, I shouldn't run into the problem of the head of the needle bar hitting the presser foot. I'm finding that even doing it the way I just laid out, loosening the front cam, loosening the back bracket, holding the bracket all the way up, that as this bracket tightens, it forces the needle arm down just a bit. And it's just getting the clearance too um, too narrow. Um, and I, I think as soon as it, it loosens at all, it's going to be hitting the presser foot again. So I don't want the presser arm to drop while I'm tightening the bracket. So I've stuck a tin in there to hold the presser arm up as I tighten the bracket. The needle arm did try to move down um, as I tightened the back bracket. And now this will be, um, for me, uh, whether or not I, I will be able to keep this machine adjusted finely enough. When I remove that tin, if the arm drops, I left a good quarter inch or more, about a quarter inch of clearance between the um, head of the um, needle arm and the presser foot in the up position. When I remove the tin, if the needle arm falls, and I have to hold it so I don't break the presser foot again, it means I may not be able to keep this um, finally. Yeah, see, that's still happening. So that's what I need to do is to get it so that that needle arm doesn't drop again. One thing I've seen is there's, um, there's an indentation along uh, the needle arm bar in the back. And what is happening is when I tighten the bracket up, there is no corresponding anything that fits into that groove. And I think that is what would keep the needle arm from dropping. Now, I could probably put a wooden shim there. Um, I did remove this screw completely. And I think if I put a wooden shim there to fill in, maybe there was a rubber gasket at some point, something that kept the bracket from pushing the, the needle arm down as you tighten it. Here's a view of the back of the bracket. And you can see that there is no corresponding shape that fits into the groove that is on that arm. Now, I don't know why that is, but what happens is when I try to tighten this bolt, it naturally um, has the needle arm bar going as vertical as possible, and that's pushing the needle arm down a little bit. And so what I'm going to do with this machine is get it as adjusted as I can, and then I'm going to leave it because until I find out if there was supposed to be a shim or a gasket or something there, then there's really not much more I can do. I'm pretty sure I have it adjusted now where I have clearance um, as it goes. So this is where I would have to keep it in order not to hit the presser foot.
So I'm going to go over everything I've just tightened and make sure it's as tight as it should be. And again, the easiest way to do it was to loosen the front cam, move by using the belt and the pulley and turning this backwards, move the needle arm to the highest position, then temporarily tighten the front cam after you've moved the bracket to the highest position you can get it and let the front cam hold that bracket up in place and then as you tighten this even without a shim or anything in there as this will naturally bring the needle arm down a little bit the bracket is held in place so it prevents the needle arm from coming down too far because the bracket is already up where it's supposed to be so that was the best way I found to adjust this so that I have clearance between the needle bar head and the glass presser foot insert.